throughout throughout the process, did you did you have any um did you grapple with like this idea of enlightenment and the way that factors into the practice? Because um particularly in some of the more uh so an example would be I sent you that book, The Mind Illuminated, a pretty interesting book. It kind of views the meditation journey as 10 stages. And the 10th one is effectively, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I guess what a lot of people would call uh, or might call awakening or enlightenment or something along those lines. So that's kind of like a, it's almost like there's a progression and you're moving towards something. Did you, did you think about that idea or that concept of enlightenment as you were going through the journey? Um, And how, how did you deal with that? Yeah. Well, you know, I think that Zen, Zen, Soto Zen doesn't talk about enlightenment in quite the same sort of way um, as a way of emphasizing the present. So um, it can be, um, especially in the Western world, especially in in the capitalistic world, um, it can be so tempting to get into a spiritual path and to, you know, almost like hold your breath until you like reach your goal, you know, like um, I'm going to do all this, um, you know, intense, fierce monk work. And then one day I will have this like enlightened mind, you know, and um, Zen actually looks at things more like, um, and this is going to sound really kind of like Zen speak, but it's like, it's like you already are enlightened you know, from day one, um, there's a veil over that. If, if you weren't already in an in, in incredible in, light, in, in, um, in alignment with the universe, um, you wouldn't even be able to have one moment of consciousness. There's something miraculous happening with you every single moment. You know, the things that we are, um, worried about and torn up about and anxious about and fearful about are the veil that's over us from all the narratives that we have placed upon reality in this moment. And the process of practice is actually unveiling to see the enlightenment that was there all along, to see the, the connectedness to the universe that was there all along. And that the pathway um, stage one, stage three, stage 10, whatever, um, the person should be just as encouraged and just as enthused to be in that stage rather than one day I will have an aha moment and the sun will like shine upon me and that will be the moment, you know. It's almost like at some point you might really have an enlightened moment and you know, that's great. You might be aware of it, or you might just see it in your rearview mirror and you don't know when you left Kansas, but you just know things are vastly different than they used to be. And, um, you know, they call um, Soto Zen farmer Zen because it's more like, you know, you don't actually see the crops growing. Um, maybe on a time-lapse photograph you do, but, um, you know, it, it, but it is growing in, in, in fits and jumps and you are walking in the middle of mist and you are getting soaked and you are getting enlightened but you don't realize it and if you stop in each moment and try to like focus and analyze like am i more enlightened than i was a month ago then you're going to really be ruining the process and so i think that's why they don't talk about it so much in zen um but it's not that it's not important